Welcome to the Circuit News, escape rooms, virtual reality games, and a robot bartender. Here at 2-Bit Circus, engineering meets the art of imagination, creating an immersive arcade experience that involves custom software, custom electronics, and lots of storytelling. I love electronics, I love hardware, I love writing software, and I could have put that stuff to use in all sorts of normal, boring ways. Instead, I decided to create crazy custom arcade and interactive experiences. You can play the classics like Pac-Man and Pinball or 2-bit originals like Super Thunder Blocks and Whiffle Waffle in the arcade. Or take part in their story rooms where you can learn to become a surgeon in Dr. Botcher's Minute Medical School. You and six people are going to walk into this room and over the course of 20 minutes, you are going to be trained to be freelance surgeons. If this sounds like an escape room, you're kind of on the right track. But in a story room, we're trying to make you live an episode of television. I am prouder of story rooms than anything else, and they use all the engineering I've ever put into practice. All of these games were created by a University of Southern California alum and his team of more than 30 engineers, programmers, mechanics, and art designers. They recently opened a new location in Dallas. An engineering student at the University of Pittsburgh is tracking storms thanks to the skills he learned in a junior design class. After a neighboring town was devastated by a tornado in 2021, Noah French engineered a mobile weather station using sensors that measure temperature, pressure, and humidity. We did have one big storm come through very close to my neighborhood. Um, and I, I signed up for a program called Storm Spotting when I was like 16, which is basically just like the first time that I had actually had to like really use it. And it was like, oh, okay, this is kind of, I could like see the storm structure. I was like, okay, I can recognize these features. Um, and so then that kind of got the gears turning about like, I could actually make like storm chasing a hobby. Parts of the United States have seen more and more tornadoes and storms in the last five years, especially in the Northeast. As he continues to improve on his mobile weather station, Noah hopes his application can help people track storms and tornadoes in their areas. Think Google Maps or Waze, but for flying Ubers. And instead of measuring traffic, it's looking at weather and wind patterns. In previous episodes, we first told you about tech companies investing in flying transportation services. Well, now engineers at the University of Kentucky are engineering ways to make it easier and safer to navigate through the air. Traditional weather measurements are done using towers that are really close to the ground, or they use an aircraft that's usually high up in the sky. Unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs operate in a unique altitude range in between the two that is really windy and turbulent. It's going to give us more information about this atmospheric boundary layer that we can improve our modeling ability and our simulation ability so we can provide better predictions. Taking a step offside now, we're telling you about a soccer playing robot created by MIT engineers. The coolest thing about it is how it learned to dribble the ball immediately with little trial and error. They call it DribbleBot and it can play in just about about any surface like sand, gravel, mud, or snow. While this bot might not be playing with Lionel Messi anytime soon, their mission is not to have the robot make a goal. These are the things that we want robots to be doing so humans can focus on what they are good at and what they want to do to realize their full potential. Thanks for joining us. That's all the time we have for now. We'll see you right here again at Circuit News TV.